Okay, so Exodus chapter 33 verse 15. So the Bible says this, this is the word of Moses. And Moses said something very powerful. And Moses said unto him, if thy presence will not go with us, we will not go ends. This is a very touching verse to me. And the reason why it's very touching is this. How can you be in slavery and someone is promising you freedom? And your response to freedom is this. If your presence will not go with us, we will not go. It's so touching. You know, I'm thinking what the people like Moses know about the presence of God that made them say, we can lose everything, but something we will not lose is your presence. What did David know? David was not because we're talking about the Holy Spirit. David was not a pastor. David was not an evangelist. But David says something is symbolic in Psalm 51 verse 11. I want to go there quickly. Psalm 51 verse 11. David said this. He said, cast me not away from your presence. He said, take not the Holy Spirit from me. Because David is a, David is a political leader. What did David know about the Holy Spirit? What did David know about the Holy Spirit? And he said, you can take the crown. You can take the money, you can take the company, but the only thing you should never take from me is the presence of the Holy Spirit. Almost in a desperate voice, David said, cast me not away. He said, I'm not perfect, but please cast me not away from your presence. What did they know? What did Jesus Christ know? That from the time he was born, he never walked a miracle until the time he had the encounter with the Holy Spirit. Maybe if we knew this, maybe we would be different. In, it would be different in our ideology. Maybe it would be different, we more effective. David had died, died for over many years right now, but Israel still celebrates 2,000 of the years of the, of the ascension of David. What did they know? I think I've turned the Holy Ghost into something I feel, something I shake, something I, you know, it's all of those things. But the Holy Ghost is more than that. Is a cast me not presence and take not the Holy Spirit from me. What did they know? If we knew the same thing, maybe we would change our approach towards the ministry and the person of the Holy Spirit. Will you lift up your two hands and let's sing the song? <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. And I know you are here, here hearing your power. I know you, you are, are here, precious Holy Spirit. Spirit. I, I know you are here, hearing your fullness. I know you are here, precious Holy Spirit. And like the woman at the well, was I seeking things that do not satisfy, but I heard my savior calling and saying and come to me come to the river to the river i shall never run dry that's why we sing it fill my cup lord i lift it up lord come and quench come and quench this thirsting of my soul, bread of heaven, bread of heaven, fill me till I want, till I want no more, fill my cup, my cup, fill my cup, Lord, fill it, Lord. And Father, I'm asking in the name of Jesus. And the word of God will come with clarity, will come with insight, faith-filled, inspiring, taking people deeper, answering questions, being applied in ways that 
the human mind cannot even cannot even come up with but the holy ghost just touching everyone i'm praying that it will provide practical direction for every man every woman here every career person every business person every single every married person every father every mother everyone watching online they will have an encounter with the lord in jesus name amen So we're talking about the Holy Spirit this month. And one of the things we really said about the Holy Spirit is this. What, see, it's amazing because what did Moses say? Moses said, we will not leave slavery if you're not with us. Huge. Jesus Christ looked at the apostles. All of them had given an assignment. He says, don't even dare to live here except to receive the Holy Spirit. For the Pentecostals, charismatic, will reduce the Holy Ghost to something we feel. So he say, I feel him. I feel it. Or he's reduced it to tongues. Who is the Holy Spirit? What is the Holy Spirit? First of all, most people think the Holy Ghost is wind. He is not wind. He is described as wind to show a character. But he himself is not wind. They said the Holy Ghost is water. He is not water. He is described as water. Who is the Holy Ghost? He's a person. How do you know it's a person? Because the Bible tells us that grieve not the Holy Spirit. He has emotions. The Bible says the Spirit knows. He has knowledge. He says the Spirit told us. He has will. But more than the fact that the Holy Spirit is a person, the Holy Spirit is God. So I say that's why it's confusing. In fact, I heard that there's a reason, you know, they're debating the Trinity that, you know, that, that you know, we, there's not like the Trinity and all of those kind of things that we, you know, because some say, is it three gods or is it one God? We serve only one God. But the thing is this, the one God will serve is in three manifestations. The one God will serve is in what? Three manifestations. He, he has three functions, three manifestations. So let me show you quickly. This is a bottle of water. This is a bottle of water. This bottle of water, if I freeze it, what does it become? Ice, yes or no? Is ice still water? In some way, it's still water because it's frozen water. If I boil this water, what does it become? It becomes vapor. Vapor is still water, it's just water in the vapor state. Why don't you say we have three types of water? No, sir. We have the same water in what? Three, in three states. So, what is God? There is only one God. There is only one God. But there are three f expressions of God. So, I would describe this water state as God the Holy Spirit. Talk about God the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is the one that you can feel but you cannot really hold like water. It's not solid, you cannot really hold. But you can tell, you can tell his presence, you can see his work, you can see his manifestation. And what would I call the ice, the frozen state, the frozen state of, 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 the frozen state of water, I will call it Jesus. You know why I call it Jesus? Because ice can be held. Jesus is the God that we can all touch and hold. Jesus is the God that we can all what? Touch and hold. And the third state is the vapor. What's the vapor? God the Father. What's God the Father? God the Father is the expression of God that no man had ever seen. This is what the way Bible says it. Bible says God dwells in unapproachable light which no man can come to. But the thing is that either he's God the Father, either he's God the Son, either he's God the Holy Spirit, he's still one God but in three expressions. Someone says that's confusing for me. Let me, ex let me explain it. it. It's like me right now. It's like me. I, I wish I could do some illustration but it's going to take my time. To you, I'm pastor. To my wife, I'm husband. To my children, I'm father. Am I different? No. Three of you call me different things. You call me pastor. My, my, my wife calls me baby. My children call me dad. Is it not the same person? The same person. When I come to my children, what I want to be is a trainer. Someone that nurtures. When I come to my wife, all I want to be is a lover. When I come to you, what I am is a spiritual servant. So it's not, it's not three types of people. So the Holy Ghost is a person. So someone says, okay, the Holy Ghost is a person. So because, because the thing is that we've reduced the Holy Ghost to, I feel him, I shake, I do. All of those things are manifestations, but it's way deeper than that. And it's unfortunate because most charismatic Christians are not deep enough to understand theology. So now we know the Holy Ghost is God as a person. And I, I, if you have more questions with this, go back to the last, um, last, last um, Sunday's messages on YouTube and watch the midweek service. That will help you. I want to go a step further. What does the Holy Ghost come to do? What does the Holy Ghost come to do with us? What does the Holy Ghost come to do with us? So I wanted to turn your Bibles, Bibles to Romans chapter 8, verse 18. 
Romans chapter 8, verse 15, rather. Romans chapter 8, verse 15. The Bible says this, For we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but we have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, What our Father? This is what it's saying. It says, one of the things, one of the reasons why you have the Holy Spirit is this. The Holy Spirit has come to you to be able to tell you what Jesus, to be able to let you know you're a child of God. He says, because people always ask me, how did you get born again? How did you can you tell she's born again? The only way we can know you're born again is not that you said the prayer. It's not that you come to church. It's that the Spirit is in you that tells you you're one of us. The Bible says this, he says, we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but we have received the spirit of adoption. How do I know I'm born again and God is my father? He said, because the spirit of adoption is in me crying what? Our father. He said that the spirit of God in me tells me I have a relationship with God. The second, the, the next verse, please, the next verse. This is what the Bible says. See what the Bible says. He said, the spirit itself bears weakness with our spirit. Our what? We're children of God. So, one thing the Holy Ghost does for us is that He gives us the assurance of salvation. Yeah. It gives us assurance. It's the Holy Ghost that gives assurance. So, it's the Holy Ghost that gives assurance. And not just assurance of salvation, even when we're going through a top patch in life, the Holy Ghost gives assurance. I don't know if you've ever been in a very terrible place in your life. Been in some valley places in my life. And when I'm so down and overwhelmed, the Spirit of God will work you son it will be okay and and when he says that there's nothing physical or negative to prove the things he has said but my god the assurance is there no wonder david said david said though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i will fear no evil why because thou if there's one god with you where is jesus jesus is not here right now jesus is in heaven at the right hand of the father where's the father the father is in, in is in heaven also who is here jesus and the father they are here in the holy spirit so he says when he says that though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death i will fear no evil what is saying to you is this you will fear. who is with me the holy spirit what does that mean? Let me take it practical. Let me take it practical. When I walk into the boardroom to present those documents before the board, I'm not alone. The Holy Ghost is right there. When I go for that interview, no matter what they've said, I'm not alone. The Holy Ghost is there. When I'm going for a CS operation to bring out my baby, and someone says, CS is yeah, alone. I'm not alone because the Holy Ghost is there. Because the Holy Ghost gives me assurance. The second thing you want to know about the Holy Ghost is this. I want to turn to your Bible also. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22. Can I have my box? So what does the Holy Ghost do in us? Number one, he gives us assurance. What does the Holy Ghost do with us? 2 Corinthians 1, verse 22. See what the Bible says. And I'm going to ask him to read another translation in a minute. But let's read from the King James first. He says this. He says, Who had sealed us and has given us what? The endless of the spirit in our hearts. What does that mean? He says, so let's take another translation. Maybe the Amplified Bible or see what it says. It says, he has identified us as his own. Guess what? How did he identify us as his own? By what? By placing what? The Holy Spirit in our hearts as what? The Holy Spirit is first installment. What does that mean? Let me explain what first installment means. Let me get this lady. Come, come, come quickly. Come, come, come. Come, single lady. Come, come, come quickly. This is a very single pretty lady right here. And, um, you know, she's single pretty lady. Let me get some single guy. You know, single guy. Come, 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 come. Single guy. Come, come. Single guy. Come. And this guy comes to this guy's family. Maybe it's my brother, my son or something. You know, you can tell he's a single guy. Even see the way he's working. Like, you know, you can tell, yeah. You know, he's a single guy. And this was going say, I like this. Is she not pretty? She's beautiful, yeah. I says, I like this lady. Watch what we do. And if we're serious, we'll go and meet a family. And we'll go and meet a family. You know what we do? We pay dowry. Does dowry mean they're married? But dowry means that she's no longer available. The Holy Ghost, <laughs> dowry means you are no longer available and you have an owner. Yes or no? God says, God gives us the Holy Ghost to show you are not available again. You have an owner. The owner is the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you here? So, 
When Satan comes and says that, I want to give you dowry. He said, no, 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 no. This one is taken. That's why I tell people, a child of God cannot have a demon at the same time. God and demons cannot coexist. Oh my God! He says the Holy Ghost is a first installment. He's the, he's the down. Do you know sometimes you want to buy a phone? And when you want to buy a phone, you don't have all the money. You go to the store and say, that phone. It says, can I just pay half of it right now? And he said, if you pay some installment, we'll take it off the shelf. Why? The installment shows it's no longer available. When the Holy Ghost comes into you, you are no longer available for the world for sin. You now belong to God. Someone has paid the price. Oh, this is huge. Oh my God. First installment. But look at what it says. It says this. And it, the Holy Ghost in our heart is the first installment. First installment that what? That guarantees that everything He promised us will happen. So, when He gave us the Holy Ghost, there are other things that God has promised us that's not happened. E.g. One is what? A glorified body that will not be sick. A new heaven and a new earth. All doesn't happen. It says, if I paid the dowry, I'm coming back to do the rest. This is huge, people. This is huge, people. Go, will you go back to that? Will, will you go back? Will, will you go back to that same um, um, that same chap that same chapter in King James? Let me show you something quickly. What, see what the Holy Ghost is in King James, Second chapter one verse twenty-two. See what who has also sealed us. So how are we sealed? So listen to me. Oh my God. I use an iPhone. My iPhone has a seal on it. Do you know the iPhone, that Apple that is like half eaten? You know, that for, that what God says, you that you belong to me once. I paid the dowry, I put a seal. What is the seal? The seal shows that, hey, this is me. This belongs to me. Once you see the seal on an iPhone, it doesn't matter where you bought it. If it's the original seal, that quality is assured by Apple. That product is assured by Apple. God says, when I put my seal on you, I'm telling you that you are mine. I'm, you know, I'm telling you that you are mine. And your category is my category. My seal is on you. Everything you expect from me is what you expect from Apple. That's what the Holy Ghost has come to do. Put a seal on us. How can you think you're cheap when the seal of God is on you? You're not a China phone, brother. You're not a China phone, brother. <laughs> the seal of God was put on you. The seal of God was put on you. The seal of God was put on you. You know, what does the seal mean? Let me I'm talking about the seal. This is uh, one, of my one, one of my beloved brothers with an invitation. You know why you put the seal here? The seal tells you, the seal tells you, who it belongs to the seal also tells you one other thing it tells you it has not been tampered with yes or no exactly god says i put my seal on you to show that you can be tampered with a lot of people always say that um you know um th thank you the two of you thank you you can let me take this also my sister let me take this also a lot of people always wonder um Will I lose the Holy Spirit listen to me you were sealed by the Holy Spirit if you were sealed by the Holy Spirit can you unseal yourself Can you unseal yourself? See, if you know that you are by the Holy Spirit, do you know the amount of... Because when, when my iPhone gets broken, I always trust that Apple has enough raw material or spare part to fix my phone because Apple is responsible. So when they say that you can't get married at 40, I'm like, you're confused. I'm sealed by God. If I'm God's product, there's nothing I will need that God has not provided for. Because God, if a human being can think spare part, God will think more than that. Are you here, somebody? Are you here, somebody? Really powerful. So the seal, the Holy Spirit, so let me, this is really good. So the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is a seal that will belong to God. So some people, some people say, that, well, you know, you know, someone says, I, I, I don't know who's going to forgive me. I've, I've made a mess. I said, what is the mess? He said, I've committed the sin against the Holy Ghost. The sin of blasphemy. The unforgivable sin. And I said, my God. I said, how do you feel? He said, I'm praying and repenting that God will forgive me. But I know you will not forgive me because I've committed the sin. Let me tell you something. One of the work of the Holy Spirit is to make you, is to make you do right. And to let you know what you do wrong. Yes or no? The fact that you already feel you have, you've done wrong. 
is the proof you have not committed the sin. You know why? If you have done wrong, who is telling you you've done wrong? It's the Holy Spirit. That means he's still with you. The one that's committed the blasphemy of the Holy Ghost, you know what happens? He cannot even tell he has done wrong because there's no Holy Ghost with him that can convict him. The reason why the sin is unforgivable is not because you cannot ask forgiveness. It's that you will not have enough sense to even ask for forgiveness. Uh, did, did you get that? You know, because when people commit the unforgivable sin, it's not that God cannot forgive it. It's only that the spirit that will make them feel that you've done something wrong and you need to make it right, that thing is no longer with them. So they can't even, they can't even receive forgiveness. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. So all of a sudden, all of a sudden, we begin to talk about the Holy Spirit. And one of the things we want to talk about today as I, you know, I, you know about the mention of the Holy Spirit, I've spoken to him. He gives us assurance. It's a seal. It's the first installment and guarantee of the things to come. But, I want to, but, but the Bible also describes the Holy, things, Holy Spirit with things. He will say, it's like a wind. Is it wind? It's not wind, but it's like wind. The Bible begins to describe the Holy Spirit in very unique ways. So, let's look at one. So, the Holy Ghost is described as water. As water. Let's look at that in the Bible quickly. John chapter 7 verse 35. John chapter 7 verse 35. 38 rather. John chapter 7 verse 38. See what the Bible says. Jesus said this. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall what? Flow rivers of what? Leaving what? Go a step further. Go a step further, please. It says, and this is spoke of what the spirit did he say the spirit is water no he says the the water is like a simile of the spirit he was using some character to demonstrate he said this is spoke on the spirit on them which you receive for the holy ghost was not given oh wow the holy spirit is described as water let's look at isaiah chapter 44 verse 3 this is very powerful so the question today is this why is the holy ghost described as water isaiah chapter 44 verse 3 he says, I will pour water upon him that is thirsty and flood upon him that is upon dry ground. He says, and I will pour out my spirit. So all the time he was talking about water on him that is thirsty, floods upon the dry ground. All he's talking about, he was talking about the Holy Spirit. So the reason why he compared this is because there are similarities between the Holy Spirit and water. Let's look at some similarities between the Holy Spirit. And this will help us understand more of the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Number one. What does the Holy Spirit do? Number one. Water refreshes. Oh, wow. Did you see the scripture in verse 33? For, um, Isaiah 44 verse 3. It says, I will pour water on him that is thirsty and flood upon the dry ground. Hey, someone says, how does water refresh? Let me tell you something. Just because we live in a fallen world. Oh, my God. A lot of things happen. Some of you, you are drained by your business because you've been pushing and pushing and pushing and you've been pushing for so many months. Some of you are drained by your marriage. You've been trying to make the marriage work, but you are your husband or you are your wife. You are loggerheads against each other. Some of you, you have been trying to get this approval, trying to migrate. You're pushing and it's sometimes, oh my God. You know what it means when you do a business and you've lost a lot of money? It's very draining. Do you know what it means when you, when you love someone and one day they decide to treat you in the way that that's not caring? It's very draining. And God says that when you are drained, He says the Holy Spirit can bring you refreshing. How do I know? The woman at the well walked to the well. And Jesus Christ said, what you need is not this water. You are thirsty for something more than water. Do you know when people are drained, they look for short time gap to help them out? So you see a guy that is really frustrated with his work and finds this shorty girl called Shinene or Shinequa. And they, he, said, he said, I'm just stressed. Let me go for Shinequa for a good time. Because he's, he's, he's hoping that the water from Shinequa can refresh his soul. Because of the pressure from work. Do you know, do you know that there are ladies that have problems with their relationship or with their job and they begin to eat a lot? Are you here? You're here? How oh, wonderful. Are you, are you online? If you're online, you know what I'm talking about. You, you begin to eat a lot. Do you know some people go to depression and they bring out their credit cards or their debit cards and they begin to buy things they don't want? 
And the reason why is that they are looking for this experience that will fill them. Now, you know some people, some guys, when they're going through a long park, they will go to, they, this is the time to go to Queen Ox or to go to the other club. What's the other club's name now? What? Kubana. This is the time to go to Kubana. And, and, and when you go to Kubana, you know, why are you here? I just want to, I want to cool off. And you know what? You get drunk. You get laid. You do all of those things. You wake up the mo- next morning and you're still thirsty. Because nothing can take it away forever. Some people can take it for a short time. Nothing can take it away forever. Some people, the doctors have told you, you can have a child, you'll be trying to get pregnant, you'll be trying to work on a deal, and because of that, you just switch off. And God says, that's not how it works. Water refreshes. That's why the song says, let your living water flow over my soul. I'm thirsty. I'm thirsty. See, some of you, what you're looking for is not what you look for. Where you're going to, you can't find what you're looking for. What you're looking for is in the water, in the river of God. Come to the river. Some people think they need relationship. You need God. Some people think they need money. You need God. Because there's a thirst. There's a thirst within your soul. Jesus says, look at the woman. He said, you've had six people in your life. And the thing is that that's not, it's not men you're looking for. There's something inside. And that thing that only me can give it to you. Have you wondered why you're so devoted to your career? Why you don't have friends? Why you're so fanatical? Just because you're thirsty on the inside. He said the Holy Spirit brings refreshing. The second thing the Holy Ghost does is this. It does only bring refreshing. And, and let me say this quickly. Even as a pastor, sometimes, maybe because I hear people's problems, I feel their weight. I don't know what it is. I just get overwhelmed. And that's my honest confession. You know, because, you know, you guys are so blessed. You know, the kind of DM I got? My mother died just now. Explain why. People just ask me a question as if I'm God's deputy. I hate God. And those things can drain. You know what I've learned over the time? Sometimes I would just leave and go to a, t- a service maybe one of my friends as a pastor. I'll never tell them I'm coming. I don't want to sit in the pastor's seat just for a place behind him. Wear a cap. And when I sit down there, why am I there? I just want to be in this presence for me to be refreshed. For me to be refreshed. For me to be refreshed. If you know me very well, you know that often I'll go for this meeting and that meeting because I want to be in the place of refreshing. The question is that when last were you in the place of refreshing? That's what happens. Someone says, NLP has made me so hopeful. You know what happens? NLP every morning is what? Refreshing. We're coming to the well. The second thing, the second thing that happens is this. With the water, what does the water do? The water has to dimension the river and the rain. We'll come to that soon. The second thing the water does is that the water gives life and growth. Water gives what? Life and growth. Psalm 1 verse 1. See what the Bible, verse 3. It says, this is what the Bible says. And you shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in what? In a season. He said the reason why you will grow is because you are planted by the rivers of water. The challenge that most business people don't think about the Holy Ghost when it comes to business. They think it's for pastors. They think it's for Amma Mama Mama Kuma Mama Mama Shake Shake. Listen to me. The Holy Ghost is more than that. Isaiah says it's the Holy Spirit that teaches you how to make profits. See what the Bible says here. He says when you are like a tree planted by the river of the Holy Spirit, you will bear fruits. The problem is this, are you planted by the river? I shared this testimony last week. One, one, one of our leaders here, you know, I mean, just by himself and leaving and all of those things. And he just got an instruction, go and have lunch in this restaurant. And he went to have lunch in the restaurant. And they had lunch in the restaurant. You know, because some of you think the Holy Ghost always says, just pray, give this. He can say those things, but he says more than those things. And all of a sudden, they went to the restaurant. He said, God, why do you want me to come and eat here? I'm even struggling financially. You don't want me to come and eat in this big restaurant. When last did you hear an, an instruction of the Holy Ghost about your career? 
when last did he hear an instruction of the Holy Ghost about your marriage, about your finance? The area you are not hearing instruction is the area you are not listening. Because he is always speaking. But in your mind, you've conditioned yourself. So he went there. As he, I was having lunch. There was a white guy on the other table. This is in, in VI. And the white guy just banged the table and said, all those Nigerians, they're all the same. Irresponsible. And when he said that, he just felt as if, why would this man say, well, irresponsible. I approached him and the man said, well, you know, my brother is the chief procurement officer of, of an oil company, one of the largest three oil companies in Nigeria. And this is billions of dollars company, hundreds of billions of dollars company. He said, I can get contracts, but I can't get contracts in my name because we are brothers. So I have a Nigerian partner, but the guy is very responsible. And the, 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 the leader in church said, oh, I'm so sorry about that. You know, I just kind of pacified him. And they got talking. And when they got talking, he said, by the way, what do you do? He said, well, I supply this and this. And he said, oh my God, that's what you do? He said, do you know that's what the contract I have right now? I need someone to supply this. He said, can you supply for me? He said, I can supply for you. The first deal the guy did, I think he made over, you know, uh, you know, over uh, maybe i'm sure well over a over 200 or 300 thousand dollars the first deal moving for someone that was living with his parents had no car he bought a brand new tear rubber car how the holy spirit how many of you the holy spirit have told you go and make this guy in business be his friend you're like no because your ego will not allow you to respond to the Holy Spirit. How many of you? Because many of you are so untrained, you don't even know the Holy Ghost is talking to you. How many of you here has the Holy Ghost told you about something? You, you don't understand how this works. This, this works in a very unique way. You know, you can be a single guy, you come into a service praying for someone to marry, and the Holy Ghost will say, you know what, when you're going to service today, don't sit, just follow the usher. I said, that's fine. And you walk through the usher, and the usher sits here, I don't like that place, not good view. I say, okay, well, let me just sit as the Holy Ghost said. You sat and you're expecting maybe the bubble will be there. You look and it was a guy that you had eight years older than. And like, why am I even sitting down here? <sighs> and Bobby, you obeyed and you built relationship with the guy and the guy tells you I'm going through depression and for some reason you take liking into him. You liked him. And when you liked him, you helped him. All of a sudden, the guy begins to frequent your house, just like, just like you're not like a mentor. And one of the days, the older brother that works for this real estate guy, um, so this oil and gas company, you know, and stays in Ikoi, just said, can I drop you at this place you're going to? Because all the time, this younger brother had been telling the older brother about this lady that is always helping out. And he said, well, let me just drop you back and even see the lady and just say thank you and drop her back. And the guy said, is that the lady? Oh my God. Because one, is had background of great news about you. Seeing you physically is like, this is exactly what I've been looking for. But you wouldn't know that if you don't follow the Holy Ghost. You know, so, so let me say something to you. The reason why it's difficult, watch this, the reason why it's difficult to follow God is this. We need it to make sense. The problem is this. If it makes sense, it's not by faith. Oh, wow. What am I preaching to today? Are they here or over there? I can hear you. Are you here? The reason why is that if it makes sense, everybody will do it. But God doesn't want to follow you because it makes sense. God wants you to follow because you trust him. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Are you here today? Are you here today? What does the Holy Spirit do? Psalm 1 verse 3. He says, He shall be like a tree planted by the river of waters. And my, my wife was speaking to me yesterday. And he said, we spoke about one of our friends in the US. And the lady said in, um, in 2019, either 2019 or 2018, he said, she just woke up with a prophetic word. Start buying masks. Start buying masks. Start holding masks. Start buying masks. Start holding masks. He said, she bought and bought masks. That time, masks was so cheap because there was no demand. Right now, you can imagine how much she has made from selling everything she's holding. The same thing happened now at the Kedja Church. One of our Kedja Church pastors, one of the pastors told me, said that this guy bought, I think he bought a car. And he didn't have, he had like two containers that were empty. And he says, what can I buy? And someone said that, you know, just buy a mask, you know. And someone, he said, for some reason, he just bought the mask. He said, Pastor, I've literally made 1,000% from the mask I bought. Question. 
when last the Holy Ghost guided in your business? Are you even open to it? Oh, no. The Holy Ghost only makes us shake because you think it's wind. When last the Holy Ghost guide in relationship? When last the Holy Ghost speak to you about that issue? And the Bible says that the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost. Look at Job chapter 14 verse 8. See what the Bible says. See what the Bible says. Job chapter 14 verse 8 to 9. It says, Though the root therefore wax old on the earth, and the stalks therefore die in the ground, yet through the saints of water, it's a bond. It says, the Holy Ghost is water. Everywhere there's deadness, it brings life and hope. Hey, when the Holy Ghost hits Oh, when you have an idea from the Holy Ghost, it doesn't matter how stuck you have been in business, boom, it will come back alive. It doesn't matter how stuck you've been in your career, boom, it will come back alive. It doesn't matter how stuck you've been as a single person, boom, it will come back alive. Somebody say Holy Spirit. Oh my God. Those online, I wanted to type Holy Spirit and get your friends to join there. What does the Holy Spirit do? I think the Holy Spirit does is this. He cleanses us. Water cleanses. You know, you, know, you know why He cleanses? This is why He cleanses. Because as we grow through life, we have hurt, we have pain, we have disappointment. So as you go through life, it's sometimes it's difficult for your heart to be in the perfect place. Do you know what I'm talking about? What the water of the Holy Ghost says, He begins to wash you. How many ladies are here and you're stuck? Because of a breakup you had. Because of something your parents did to you. Because someone raped you. And you don't talk about it, but you carry it in your heart. And the Holy Ghost says, that's why you're not moving forward. Can I wash you? Holy Ghost says, can I wash you? Hey! How many people are here? Business people. The last time you lost 100 $200,000 was the last time you took a risk in business. And the reason why you carry that scare, that fear, that oh God, uh, and Holy Ghost says, hey, let's do something about this. As a pastor, I've had good and bad experiences. But one thing I'm learning is I can go to the Holy Ghost and say, cleanse me. Wash See, some of you were raised in abusive homes. Some of you carry toxic emotions. You have unusual fear. You have control issues. And Holy Ghost says, I can help you. I can help you. I can help you. Why some of you to help you? You go and have popcorn at the movies. And Holy Ghost says, movies will not help you. I can help you. And the water cleanses. Lift up your hands and say, Holy Spirit. Say it again, Holy Spirit. Say it again, Holy Spirit. And let me say something to you. You can put on your hands. If you're bleeding and you don't fix it, you will bleed on people that did not cut you. Oh my God. I think this people here understand what I'm talking about. Yeah. If you're bleeding and you don't fix it, you will bleed on people that did not cut you. And many of you are wondering, how come my helpers are staying away? And the reason why you are bleeding on your helpers is just because it's an issue you refuse to fix. And I know you've kept it in the place. Some of you have people ignored it. You've kept it. And Holy Ghost says, I can cleanse it. I can cleanse it. That's what the water does. It cleanses. That's what the water does. It cleanses. Sometimes as a pastor, you need a lot of cleansing. Some of you have done wrong things. Some of you can't even forgive yourself. And the Holy Ghost says, let me help you with the guilt. Let me help you with the condemnation. Some of you have been to churches where you've been abused. And you come today. And you, I can't trust a pastor. I've heard so many things. And God says, let me take care of that also. You know, there are people that want to get married, but they can't love. They can't give their heart to a woman. They can't give their heart to a man. Because something another girl has done or something another guy has done. And Holy Ghost says, can I help with that? Some of you, the Holy Ghost have told you, hey, 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 it's time to join the workforce. Say, ah, with what, what, what he did to me the last time? God says, I know, but let me cleanse you. Because I still want to use you. What does the Holy Ghost do? It quenches tests. <laughs> Hallelujah. Quench his test. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, this is powerful. Someone says, how can I develop a more intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit? This is how you do it. The first thing is consciousness. See, many of us, the Holy Ghost is there with us, 
but we are always ignoring him. Listen, the Holy Ghost is so important. Jesus Christ said, don't go anywhere until you receive the Holy Spirit. You know what God is saying to you? Just by saying, I'm sending to an ATM machine before you go take my ATM card. Most of us think the ATM card is not important, so we run to the ATM machine. And all of a sudden, we start punching all the numbers, punching everything and saying, why is this machine not bringing up marriage? You punch it, why is this machine not bringing up promotion? You punch it, why is this machine not bringing up? And Holy Ghost says, no, 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 you didn't take the ATM card. God just says, you know, he says, no, I didn't ATM card. There's money in the account, I'm here, then we should have it. If God says you need the Holy Ghost, trust me, you need the Holy Ghost. So how do you become close to the Holy Spirit? The way you become close is consciousness. Did you notice that Samuel, when God called him, Samuel! Samuel ran to Eli. Pa, 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 pa. Eli, where am I? Am I? Didn't God, can, couldn't God have stopped him? That's not the way God works. Until you become conscious of God, no further instructions. You can't recognize further instructions. Samuel! Pa, 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 pa. Eli. Eli said the last time, when you hear that voice, say, here am I. The moment Samuel became conscious of God, more instructions began to come. It's time you become conscious of God in your singleness. It's time you become conscious of God in your business. It's time you become conscious of God in your finance, in your career. Why? The more you become conscious of God, the more you hear God. I told you the Holy Ghost is like rain. What's it, what does the rain do? Your heart. This is your heart. When it rains, the rain keeps your heart fertile. Fertile. So that good things can come out of you. But most of us are not. So, so it's raining. The Holy Ghost is like rain. Oh yeah. Let, let me show you that quickly. George chapter 2. Let's read that quickly. George chapter 2. And give me my umbrella. George chapter 2. Verse 28. Oh my God. Verse 23. He said, Be glad then, ye children of Israel, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you what? The former rain moderately, and it will cause to come on you down. The, um, it will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain. Verse 28 tells us what he's talking about. How do I know? Verse 28. Verse 28 says this, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out. So he began to describe the Holy Spirit as what? Oh no, why are you doing this to me this morning? As what? Oh, come on. As what? As what? All of you online, I want to type rain. It said the Holy Spirit is rain. He, and it says, let it rain on your job. Let it rain. But there's a problem. It's raining. But some of us have umbrellas. What are umbrellas? Glory to God. What are umbrellas? Huh? So, someone says, I've been joining NLP for six months. Everybody has a testimony. Even the ones I invited, my friends, they all have a testimony. Why don't I have? Because you have an umbrella. For you to get wet, you must take away your umbrella. See, the rain of the Holy Spirit wants to come on people, but the challenge is this. This is the big challenge. The challenge that people have umbrellas. What are umbrellas? Mindsets. Mindsets. They have umbrellas. Ah, uh, why will I find a great man to marry me? Can I do well in this kind of Nigeria? This country, can I even do well in it? How can you get help out with this economy? Oh my God. See what the doctor said. I know that things cannot work again. Doctor said, I can. you have this umbrella and the, and the rain of the spirit is falling. And God says, I can make it rain, but you have to take away the umbrella. You have to take away the umbrella. I understand that you have lost a, a lot of money and you have this fear that things will never work again, but take away the umbrella. I know that you've been trying to get married and you believe for the past 10 years and it has not worked and you think there's no great man there's no great woman but you have to take away the umbrella why if you keep staying in the umbrella it will be raining all around you but the rain cannot touch you and some of you i wish i could tell you you have one umbrella you don't you have layers of umbrellas 
there are layers of umbrellas you have umbrellas for everything and that's why everyone gets wet around you in fact you tell yourself I don't know why God doesn't like me. It's an umbrella. Because if you think God doesn't like you, you can get wet. The, the, the rain of the Spirit comes to those that believe that God is good and kind. Hey, everybody say, God is good and kind to me. Online, write it there. Say, God is good and kind to me. Someone says, oh, who will help me? I know nobody. That's an umbrella. That nobody's going to help me. What umbrella are you carrying? And sometimes the umbrella is not your fault. It's the way you were brought up. Do you know there are some people that cannot speak in tongues and the reason why is that they've told them that they cannot speak in tongues that are me. I don't know. No, no, it's not for me. It's not, it's not for people like me. How can I speak in tongues? And the reason why is that what you believe is what you become. Doctor says you can't have a child. And you say, yeah, doctor says you can't have a child. When did your doctor become your God? When did your doctor become your God? When did your doctor become your God? One lady yesterday was telling what I was in our UK summer meeting yesterday. I just did a surprise visit. And one lady was saying, he said that I, I lost my job and ended up with a criminal record for my job as a professional engineer. Because of that, I've not gotten any job, maybe in about maybe um, 2016 till now. Maybe that's about how many? 2013 or 16. Something like eight, five years, something like that. You know, and in the UK, as a citizen, just imagine. He said, I had, went from someone that was, had three houses to someone that was moved into a council flat. I lost all my houses. He said, everything was over. He said, but I joined NLP. And this is why I give you the scriptures. And this is why I do the Insta Life when I teach. You know why? I give the scriptures to remove the umbrella so that the rain can touch you. If you've been praying for such a long time and you don't see results, maybe you are praying under an umbrella that is preventing God from touching you. Remember the story of someone I told you that couldn't get pregnant because of a mindset? So, as... As she joined NLP, he said, Pastor, I, I got, he said, I went for an interview. I said, I've done hundreds. I went for an interview. And he said, when I went for the interview, the person that did the interview said, why did you lose your job? She told the person, he told her, he said, well, I understand that. And that's a terrible thing, but I will still employ you. Why? Why didn't it happen before? Because the umbrella was there. But now the umbrella has been removed. And wow, she got the job. Not only that, our agent told her, there's no way any bank can support you because you've destroyed your credit record. She said, I know the God of NLP. She left the agent, took her papers to the bank herself and says, I want a mortgage. Bank says, we don't know what's going on here, but we want to do it for you. They approved it for her. She got a five-bedroom duplex, a five-bedroom duplex against negative records. Question. It's time to get to what's in the Holy Ghost. Where's the umbrella? Where's the um, what umbrella? Some of you, the Holy Ghost says serve. You say, no, 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 I can't serve because, you know, I'm this, I'm so busy. You have an umbrella. How many of you have the Holy Ghost been talking to you about your titan? Talking about sowing a seed, talking to you about giving something and dealing with you about your generosity. And you keep saying, next month I will start, this month I will start. And the Holy Ghost said, you're not ready yet because of umbrella. 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 Hey, umbrella. Everybody lift up your hands and just, just, hold, just hold an invisible umbrella. Just hold an invisible umbrella. And say, yeah, because I wanted to remember what umbrella that is. Because nobody has loved me. Nobody will ever love me. Who said that to you? Oh, because, because things are so bad, it will always be bad. Like this. Who said that to you? Because it has not happened within the first seven months. 2021 is gone. Who said 2021 is gone? Who is the devil? Listen to me. God took seven days to make heaven and earth. You have more than four months before this is over. And you say, God cannot do it. Take off the umbrella, sister. Hallelujah. He says, you crown my year with your goodness. Ah, 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 ah. I'm charging up. I'm charging up. It doesn't matter what they think. It doesn't matter what they say. God's word will come to pass. God is the one that opens the door and no man can shut. He's the one that shuts the door and no man can open. Can I prophesy over you? <laughs> the things you have not achieved up till now, in the month of August, it will be record achievements. The things you have not seen up till now, it will be record achievement. In the name of Jesus Christ, shout I receive it. Each can have your seat. 
it's time to remove the umbrella the umbrella is a mindset that prevents the rain of the holy spirit from soaking ladies and gentlemen i want to be soaked in the rain of the holy spirit it's time to move on brothers and the next thing is this how do you have an intimate relation to the holy spirit are we ready where's the lady we're using yeah come come please lady come quickly pastor handsome come quickly Hey, come, come. Just take one of the ropes. How do I have a more intimate relation to the Holy Spirit? Yeah, just take one of the ropes. Just go. That's where you have more, 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 more relationship. This is how you have, someone says, how do I have a deeper relationship with the Holy Spirit? This is how, what it is. The more you yield to the Holy Spirit, the more, the deeper and more intimate relationship you have with the Holy Spirit. So this is how it goes. Watch this. Just help me here. This is you. This is the Spirit. Spirit, come forward a little. Come forward. A little. Just come forward a little. I want it to be someone here. This is the flesh. Flesh, come forward a little. This is you. Come forward, flesh. This is you. How do you have more intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit? When something happens, the Holy Ghost will pull you to his side and when he pulls you you have the option to move or you're that but as he pulls you the flesh also what pulls you the thing is that the flesh looks more palatable the flesh is more enjoyable the flesh is sweeter the flesh is nicer it's good for the flesh it's the things i like but the things of the spirit sometimes are not good for the flesh so the holy ghost wakes you up at 3 a.m and say pray it's a praise. It pulls you to prayer. Flesh says, have you checked your Instagram today? <laughs> have you checked your Instagram? Have you checked what they posted? Have you watched BB Ninja today? Have you caught up with BB Ninja today? The flesh is pulling you. The spirit says, take a big step and start a new business. The flesh is saying that you will lose money again. It talks fear. You will do this again. The spirit says, let go of your ex. And just see the work of God, how we'll make it up. You say, how can I let go of that bastard with everything he has done to me? God punish him and his mother. God does this. And you're pulling. And what you don't know is this. This is what you don't know. Are you here, somebody? Uh, does it sound familiar? Does it sound familiar? <laughs> the spirit is saying, despite the doctor's report, the fiber will be healed. The flesh says, when will it be healed? <laughs> this is the thought you have been carrying it. Uh, I've gone everywhere. When will it be healed? When will it be healed? When will it be healed? The spirit says, you will still have your child. You say, after many years, uh, after many years, the company will still hit the first five million dollars. You say, how will he hit it? How will he? And the, the flesh is saying, don't mind them. It will hit nothing. Uh, it will. It will. <laughs> if you know that, just. Cut your way. And this, the spirit says, I want you to begin to tithe and to give and to give dangerous seed. The flesh says, how can you give dangerous seed? Have you seen your wardrobe? You need some new shoes. Have you seen you need a new car? And you need to pay rent. The school fees is coming. Ah! You're never at any physical touch. I'm online. They will pull you. That's your excuse. And this is what you don't know. The more you respond to the flesh, the more you become distant with the spirit. So formerly, this was where you were with the spirit. Very close. It could even touch you. But as you began to move closer to the flesh, distance, 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 distance. See how far you are from the spirit. And see how close you are to the flesh. Flesh can even hug you. It can hug you. And what's the difference? Is the fact that who are you yielding to? God is calling you to prayer. He said, now I want to watch television. I feel tired. Yeah, I don't feel like this. I, I will just do church from home. God is calling you to a deeper dimension. God is calling you to a, a place of service. God is calling you to a place of service. He said, uh, well, I want to serve, but you know, with my schedule, with my experience. And the flesh said, don't serve. It's inconvenient. How can it look at this kind of girl? God is saying, what is God saying to you? What is God saying to you? Why don't we develop a closer walk with God 
because every time the Holy Spirit is drawing us in, we keep pulling away to the flesh. The flesh and the spirit are two opposing forces. You can't be close to one and be close to the other. The question today is this. Is it time to say bye-bye to the flesh? Or is it time to say bye-bye to the spirit? All I know is this. He that walks after the flesh will die. But he that goes after the spirit will have life and life eternal. Are you ready, people? Let's go ahead and pray.